Hello everyone, my name is Brody Quinn. I'm the clinical lead for ultrasound and an emergency specialist at Toowoomba Hospital. Uh, we're gonna go through a quick instructional video today talking through lung ultrasound and lung pokers, going through our local protocol for lung pathology. Now this is a screening test for lung pathology. It's by no means a complete lung ultrasound. And we're gonna go through the pragmatics of this and how to obtain these windows relatively quickly and efficiently answering the four big questions that you want to know when you're looking, going through lung ultrasound. That is, is there a pneumothorax? Is there evidence of pneumonia? Is there any evidence of interstitial syndrome? Effectively, is there any interstitial fluid? Or is there any pleural effusions? Um, we're going to go through that protocol today. Uh, we're going to use some of our local ultrasound machines here and hopefully you guys get something out of it. So we've got Chris here, our model volunteer today, and we're gonna do a quick lung ultrasound for POCUS for our module that we're doing here in Toowoomba. So basically, you've got two different patient populations that you'll have when you're doing lung ultrasound. You'll have your patients that are able to sit up for you, and you'll have the critically unwell patients that are actually supine. Preferentially do this while they're sitting up, you get better images and better quality of scan, and you can also get more posterior images. So we're gonna do the sitting up one first, and then I'll show you the differences when we lie in supine later on. So we've set up our Spark already. So we've got a curvy linear probe in a lung preset, and our depth is about 10 to 12 centimeters uh, for most people is adequate. So what you do with your surface anatomy with lung ultrasound is you want to break it up into four quadrants where we've got the anterior and superior quadrant, the anterior and inferior quadrant. Then we've got the posterior superior and posterior inferior quadrants. And then we'll also take one more image in the mid axillary line as well. So you capture most of the lung. Now remember this is a screening exam, not a full lung protocol. And what we're looking for is for evidence of those four critical pathologies in crit care for patients with shortness of breath hypoxia. So that is every time you acquire an image, we're wondering, is there a pneumothorax? Is there pneumonia? Is there evidence of interstitial syndrome? Or is there a pleural effusion? Okay, so let's go through and we'll get the anterior windows done first. So with Chris lying here comfortably in the bed, we're gonna start off with the anterior superior quadrant. So mid clavicular line, we're gonna come through and pop our probe down and we're gonna start by imaging in the longitudinal plane around the third and fourth intercostal space. We can start higher, but as you can see on the screen, when we start higher, we're dropping away and we get less quality images there. So to optimize your image, you wanna have two ribs, rib shadow, rib shadow, with a pleural line in the middle. To brighten that pleural line and make it as bright as possible, always just angle your probe slightly towards the mediastinum when they're in the anterior chest, okay? You can see now we've got really nice crisp pleural line here. You've got some A lines here as well, and you can see the rib shadowing. So we're just gonna come down to the next intercostal space and look there, okay? When we're saving these images, we need to save, so what I do for lung ultrasound is I just acquire a cine loop. If you want to save M mode to prove that there's not a pneumothorax, that's also okay. But saving a cine loop will do the same thing because you're able to see that lung sliding in a cine loop. All right, so we've done the anterior quadrants there. We'll come down, one more segment there. Watch your lung sliding. And then we're going to come across and then we're going to go down to the anterior and inferior section. So in different protocols, they measure that different way. Just above, about the nipple line is where you're going to start to look at this uh, inferior quadrant. So again, same process. Go through, next pleural space down, and now we're getting into diaphragm here. So if you see any areas of interest along any of those planes, my suggestion to you would be to fan across and scan in that region, looking for the pathology, and then flip around and have a look in the same intercostal space in an, in an oblique fashion across that intercostal space to really interrogate the pathology that you're looking at, okay? So it's anterior, anterior superior, anterior inferior. While we're here with Chris, we're gonna get him to put his arm up and look at our mid clavicular line coming across. So this is our view, the same as with EFAS. So zippy sternum, come across, pop the probe down. What you wanna do here is you want to capture the diaphragm as best you can 
coming in and out of the image, okay? You might need a touch more depth here because what we really want to see is we're looking for spine sign here for a pleural effusion. So spine coming along, diaphragm, spine stopping. So there's no evidence of a small pleural effusion there. So we've moved on to the posterior chest now, and we're gonna look through the lungs and the posterior aspect. So again, with your patient being able to sit up, it makes this exam a lot easier. You can either have them sitting on the edge of the bed or simply just sitting up in the bed as well. What you can do to try and move the scapulas out of the road, if your patient is able to, we'll get Chris just to cross his arms across his chest. So that way then you can visualize more lung. So now we've got Chris positioned, we're gonna have a look through and we're gonna do we're going to do posterior and superior and then posterior and inferior quadrants. So starting posterior and superior along the border of the scapula. Try and get your nice bright white lines there with your rib shadows. And what you're doing is you're just tracking down in the longitudinal plane, having a look for any evidence of pathology there. All the way down till we get to diaphragm, okay? So once we're at the base here, it's always good just to come up a touch and just slide across and just track across a bit laterally there. Uh, if you've got time, it is always useful to scan more lung if you can. So coming up to the base of the scapula again, looking at the pleural line might be helpful and you might pick something else up, but this is genuinely a screening exam. So remember, we're just screening in the posterior section here for any pathology. If you find anything of interest, then you need to do a more thorough scan of that area in both the longitudinal and an oblique plane as well. So we've gone through the patient where you're doing a point of care lung ultrasound if they're able to sit up for you. Now we're gonna demonstrate what happens when they can't sit up, so for your supine patients. Um, basically the anterior aspect of this is gonna be exactly the same, so we won't do that again, but you need to scan through your anterior superior and anterior inferior quadrants. Then do your mid axillary line, checking for spine sign there. And then the, the only real way to have a look at the posterior chest in this instance is to get the patient, if they can, to pop their arm up above their head, which moves the scapula up and out of the road. If they can tilt it all to the left-hand side, then that's excellent. If they can't do that, then I think, really, you just get the images that you can acquire. Grab your probe and just go as far posterior as possible. So on the screen here, you'll see as I come up, we get scapula there causing artifacts. So from the scapula, just follow the lung line down in as far as close to the middle of the posterior plane as possible down to diaphragm. Again, this isn't as thorough as if the patient can sit up, but it's all about a screening examination looking for obvious pathology. So obviously this isn't as an accurate a scan as if they can sit up for you, but this is a pragmatic way of having a look at the lung, both anterior and posterior in a patient that literally cannot sit up. So we've only done the right lung today with Chris. When you're doing this in real life, please do both lungs uh, when you're doing lung pocus. I think it's important just to realise that this is a screening exam. We're also taking our different patient populations, do the different exams for those that can sit up and those that can lie down. Thanks for watching. That concludes our video tutorial looking at our local protocol for lung ultrasound. I hope you guys got something out of it and happy scanning. Innovation and you, Philips.